in the process of mounting the vertical stabilizer gusset or vertical stabilizer fairing, and there's two ways you could do it. You could put it on this way, or you can put it on the other way. I think I like this way better. So that way, this kind of looks more, you know, um, I don't know. This one looks a little more vertical, a little bit more of a tail. I think that's the comp more common way, but I'm just going to mark it right now and put some rivets in it. I'm going to put stainless steel 42s in it. Okay, got the vertical stabilizer gusset fairing installed. Uh, just a slight gap at the top, but I'm going to cover. I'll cover that up with um, duct tape, and you will not even see it. But uh, that's on there. I don't think that that's kind of nice. It just sort of holds the um, that uh, end where the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer comes down to the boom tube right there. So I'll just kind of keep that in place. But you got the bolts right here and here. So that is done. I'm going to try to be less verbose on these videos. I apologize. Um, the last two videos I made all talk and not a lot. But I'm just in the planning phases, you know. Uh, I think since then I put on the, these guys, these um, former plates. They're called former plates. And this is the root tube former plates. And then you've got former plates that go around uh, there. But anyway, install these. Just a couple rivets. Again, stainless steel 42s on that. So that's going to be ready to cover with fabric. All right, I've taken the fuel, fuel cam uh, out, gas tank out, because um, I have to uh, get in there for the shock cord landing gear. I'm going to wrap that pretty soon. So what I did was I undid the brackets. This is the tray that holds that's you know bolted in holds the um the gas tank and uh, you notice a little hole in the bottom what that is is this little guy so um and that's just the lowest point of the fuel tank so this uh this aluminum tube goes down into the bottom and uh and then you know you got the lowest point so you got 10 10 gallons on here i'm going to probably remark it but I'm just going to set that aside and uh, my son i think is going to help me um he's pretty strong so We'll, we will um, wrap it right on this bar right there. So if I come around this way, um, we're just going to put the, the landing gear. I'm going to mount the, the main bars first, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, bend the aluminum pieces, do 12 wraps around that. Once that's bolted in, I'll uh, put the U-bracket in. I think it's like a double U-bracket right about where my foot is there. And then uh, wrap it 12 times, put the aluminum on, wrap it 12 more times. So 24 wraps of the shock cord. Um, at about um, uh, about 75% strength, anywhere between 50 and 75% strength, I think it is. So we'll see. We should get 24 wraps out of it, though. Uh, no more, no less, because um, you know then it's it's not quite the right tension. <laughs> I've got the uh, weldments in place right here, and uh, Kate was helping me um, about a week ago or so do that. I've had some time off here um, from the airplane, just working. Um, and what I'm going to do with the shock cord is uh, there's a video out for this that uh, Tom has on a second CD that comes with the installation of the airplane. But uh, basically it's about, I don't know, about six inches, four, four to six inches or so on the end. And it ties a knot, it goes through there. It's going to get wrapped 12 times around here uh, at about 50%, like I said, 75% tension. And then you put um, these plates on right here, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then uh, wrap it again 12 more times, stick it through the hole one more time, tie another knot, done. So you don't even have to touch it after that. So that's the goal. Let's see if Justin can help me today. It's pretty hard to pull on it. It takes quite a bit of tension. Like the, the full movement of this is there, that's about 100%, so 75% is about there. Mm -hmm. 